entitled Significant Changes to the World Anti-Doping Code 2021, wherever you are. In the Dordrecht bubble, for those who will be competing at the World Short Track Championships this weekend or the others anywhere else in the world. If you have questions during this presentation, please use the Q&A button and type in your question or comment. We will have time to answer at the end of the webinar. Sorry. Okay. Okay, Ashley, the ISU Anti-Doping Assistant, and I, Christine Cardis, ISU Anti-Doping Manager, will conduct you through this webinar. For the anti-doping community, year 2021 is very important as it is synonym of the launch of the new code and consequently some changes in the anti-doping rules. The aim of this seminar is to focus on the changes that has a direct impact on you, skaters, and your entourage, and also to remind you some important points of the anti-doping rules. Let me introduce you to the World Anti-Doping Code, commonly called the Code. The Code is a core document that harmonizes anti-doping policies, rules, and regulations for all actors of the fight against doping around the world. It protects your fundamental right to participate in clean sport. It promotes and protects your health, as well as the fairness and equal opportunity for all you worldwide, regardless of the sport practiced. The 2021 code is the fourth version of the code and is effective since January 1st, 2021. As a signatory of the code, the ISU has compiled its own anti-doping rules and anti-doping procedures, which are published as ISU communication 2344 and 2366, available on the ISU website. The code works in conjunction with eight international standards, which aim to foster consistency among anti-doping organizations in various areas. It is mandatory for all signatories, international federation, national organization, major event organizers, to be compliant with the code and the international standards. So is the ISU. I will now give the floor to Ashley. Thank you, Christine, for setting the tone of the webinar. Welcome, dear friends of the skating family. I'm Ashley, and I shall take you along this webinar, starting with the topic, International Standards by WADA. But first, let us take selfies. For the skaters at the hub in Dordrecht, at any point during this webinar, you can post something on Instagram with the hashtag pure eyes and tagging the handle ISU speed skating. And doing so, you will receive a goodie to your room. The previous webinars also had skaters receiving the goodies the very next day. Think of this as a treasure hunt, where the hunt is a social media post, be it a selfie of you attending the webinar, a screenshot of this webinar, a picture of your room or your skates, and the treasure, which would be a goodie, pure as eyes goodie, that would be outside your door. Don't forget the hashtag pure as eyes and tag ISU speed skating. It will be easier if it is a post and not a story so we can identify with the hashtag. So moving on to the international standards, uh, the World Anti-Doping Code, as mentioned earlier by Christine, works in conjunction with the following eight international standards. These eight international standards contains the protocols and the framework on various elements with respect to doping in sport and as its ecosystem. Skaters, the international standards are relevant for you because 
First, the International Standard of Education. This document contains the educational responsibilities related to clean sport and your right to be aware and receive anti-doping education. Second, the protection of privacy and personal information. This is a document that states the guidelines to safeguard your privacy and personal data. The code compliance by signatory is a co compliance document that is to be agreed by all signatories, international federations like the ISU, public authorities, the national anti-doping organizations, etc., are all part of this. The International Standards on Laboratories is a document that defines standards of care and compliance for laboratories to be set up across the world that processes samples of athletes. The therapeutic use exemptions, many of you must have come across this term that provides guidelines on how one can obtain TUEs and compete if they have a genuine and legitimate medical condition. The testings and investigations is an international standard that determines testing, investigation, and the standards that need to be followed by all testing authorities, international federations, and NAROs. The results management is a document that underlines how results are to be managed. And last but not the least, the prohibited list. This is of grave importance to you as this contains the list that gives you the substances and methods that you need to avoid any person dealing with your health, your diet, be it your coaches, doctors, parents, support staff must be aware of this list that is updated regularly. We now move on to the changes to the code uh, by Christine. Thank you, Ashley. In the 2021 code, health is the top rational. The rights of the athletes has been reinforced and is now found in the Code 2021 and as a separate document named the Athletes Act. This new document, the Athletes Anti-Doping Right Act, commonly called Athletes Act, aims to ensure that athletes' rights within anti-doping are clearly set out, accessible and universally applicable. You can find it on the ISU website Clean Sport pages and on the WADA website. The Act is div divided in two parts. First, your rights that are found in the code and international standard, as, for example, equitable and fair testing program, rights to data protection, or rights during a sample collection session. Secondly, your rights not found in the code and international standards, as for example, rights to participate in governance and decision-making or right to legal aid. As an athlete, you are a major actor of the fight against doping. Therefore, you have rights and responsibilities. Let's see what is your role. You must now, you must know and comply with all applicable rules, anti-doping policy and anti-doping policy. Therefore, to avoid any unfortunate issues, please know the anti-doping rules, stick to them, as you are doing for the rules applied in any competition. It is your responsibility to be available for testing. You are responsible of your body. Be kind with it. Tell your doctors and pharmacists that you are a top athlete and cannot take medication without knowing what it contains. Do not hesitate to ask, to ask for help if you are unsure, either through your medical team, your national anti-doping organization, or the ISU anti-doping department. 
who are here to help you. Do not hesitate to cooperate with the ISU or your national anti-doping organization to keep your sport clean. And if asked, do not retain information on those who support you, but share the information. A major change was implemented in the 2021 ISU anti-doping rules as in the past, it was your responsibility to make sure that you were selected for testing after a competition. So before leaving the ice stadium, you had to check the form posted on the doping control station. But this is no longer the case. If you are selected for testing, the chaperone will inform you. If you have not been approached by a chaperone, you can leave the stadium. But please, let enough time to the anti-doping team to find you and do not run away as soon as you have finished your race. I now give the floor to Ashley, who will present the ISU education program. Thank you, Christine. From this year, education is a mandatory international standard under the World Anti-Doping Code. The ISU provide the, the international standards of education provides guidelines on how anti-doping organizations, in this case, the ISU and your respective NADOs need to plan deliver, monitor, and evaluate anti-doping education programs for you and your support personnel. So know that education is your right. The spirit of clean sport education is that the first step of skaters' journey to clean sport should be through education and not doping control. So with that principle in mind, we have Purize e-learning, which is a certificate course tailor-made for ISU skaters that provides values-based education on clean sport. We would really urge you to take it up. We have made it an easy language for you to understand all the basics of anti-doping and it will not take much time for you to complete it. We have some prizes for you at the hub. So if you complete this course and get your certificates, we shall inform the event organizers to give your goodie to your own. Since this is a special year due to COVID, we are not on site to do our pure size outreach program. Hence, we are hosting this webinar. We hope to see you soon in person with more quizzes, games, and goodies. Here are a few snippets of the pure size education resources. As mentioned earlier, values-based learning to the pure size e-learning certificate course. This is the Pocket Learning Anti-Doping and You leaflet. These are the few snippets of Pure Size outreach that was conducted last year. Due to unexpected events, we cannot meet you in person, but hopefully we get to see you like this very soon. We now move on to substances and detection. Before we start this topic, I would like to remind you to use the question and answer button at the bottom of your screen, if you have any doubts or queries regarding any topics that we have discussed so far or any other general doubts that you may have, and we shall get to, get to it at the end of the webinar. Substances and detection. So a new category to the prohibited list includes substance of abuse, WADA has identified this category of substances, which are called a substance of abuse which are substances that are both prohibited in competition and frequently abused in society outside of sport. These include cocaine, methylene, dioxy, methamphetamine, commonly called as MDMA and ecstasy, diamorphine, and tetrahydrocannabinol, which is THC that comes under cannabinoids. So if an athlete tests positive for a sub substance of abuse, and establishes that his or her use of that substance occurred out of competition and was unrelated to sport performance, 
the athlete's period of ineligibility will be reduced to three months with no need to further analyze the degree of fault. Yes, athletes may still receive an anti-doping rule violation if they test positive for a, pro for a prohibited substance in the substance of abuse category. The designation of substance of abuse only affects the resolution of the case during the results management process, including the length of a resulting sanction. So we have a question. What happens when substances are added to or removed from the prohibited list? In this case, they cannot, unless specifically stated otherwise, be analyzed for in an athlete sample that has already been collected. Similarly, what happens to an athlete who's serving a ban for a substance that has been recently removed from the prohibited list? In such cases, such athletes can apply to the relevant results management authority to reduce their period of ineligibility. We now move on to supplements. Supplements is always a tricky topic. Always consult your doctor before putting anything in your mouth. This is because the core ingredients that make up for the supplements are not included in the label. And usually supplement companies have very smart terms and conditions that relieve them of their responsibilities. You must always, always assess the risk before deciding to use a supplement and research any product before you use it. Not taking this risk seriously may mean you will not benefit from a reduced sanction if you test positive. We now move on to samples and data usage that shall be conducted by Christine. Let's see now what can happen to your samples. At the doping control station, Sample A and B are collected, but in the laboratory, both E and B samples can be split into two. The split spot can be used to confirm any initial findings. To preserve, to preserve the integrity of your samples, you have the right to be present or delegate a representative for the splitting of the samples. If you are not present, the sample can still be opened, split and analyzed in the presence of an independent witness. Only WADA accredited laboratory can deliver a positive report, which is called an adverse analytical finding, AAF. Your sample can also be used for research, but only if you approve it on the doping control form. But be reassured, your samples will be completely anonymized before being used as a research samples. You still need to know that the samples can be analyzed many times. It can be stored for up to 10 years. It can be shared within different anti-doping organization. For example, if the IOC stores the samples collected during the games after the analysis results has been given, the ISU could ask after some years to the IOC, the permission to conduct further analysis on the stored sample. The results of these reanalyses can lead to an RRF. And last but not least, WADA can take immediate possession of samples and anti-doping data from a laboratory or an anti-doping organization. We now move on to results management. In results management, a key salient feature is to remember that everything is connected. Any consequences imposed by an anti-doping organization, be it the ISU or your NADO in this case, the violation will be recognized by all other signatories that are world anti-doping code signatories. So if an athlete is provisionally suspended 
by one international federation or one NADO, all other organization connected to it will uphold that suspension. For example, if a speed skater who also competes in roller skating, any provisional suspension from one authority will apply to both sports. We now move on to ADRV and sanctions. Various behavior or misconduct can be sanctioned by an anti-doping rule violation. Let's go through some of them. Complicity. Complicity is acting as an accomplice or encouraging or covering up doping practices is a violation of anti-doping rules. Sanctions can go from two years up to lifetime ban. Prohibited association. Do not collaborate with someone who is serving a period of ineligibility. Know your crew. Don't skate on thin ice. Protection for individual reporting violations. If you get to know information on doping practices to keep your sport clean, you are encouraged to use a speaker platform available on the IUCU website to denounce this act. You will be protected and any person trying to discourage you may be sanctioned with an RDRV. Substantial assistance is when information is provided by somebody to help to bring anti-doping cases in the light. It can lead to a reduction of the sanction if the assistance is given by a person who committed an anti-doping rule violation. The reduction of the sanction depends on the assistance provided. And of course, if provided, information does not help, the period of ineligibility will not be reduced. Tampering during the results management process is considered as a separate first violation. If ever you are facing an anti-doping rule violation, do not give wrong information as this can be counted as the first violation. But choose to give substantial assistance instead. More situation can lead to an RDRV, but I will close here this chapter. If you want to know more about the changes made to anti-doping rule violation, RDRV, and sanction, as well as the hearing and appeal process, we encourage you to download the Atlas Guide to the Significant Changing in the 2021 Code, edited by WADA, and available on the ISU website, Clean Sport page. The purpose of this guide is to help you to understand the main changes linked to the 2021 code. This webinar has been prepared in line with this guide. I will let Ashley conclude this webinar and please, Take, take time to ask your question. Thank you, Christine. Before we conclude, we have these goodies at the hub in your hotels for the skaters who are, who are joining us from the door deck bubble. All you have to do is to promote clean sport on social media and also complete the Pure As Ice certification program and you will receive a goodie to your room. So a few basic things to make things easy to, to navigate. This is the ISU website, www.isu.org. Within this website, you have this section, which is the clean sport and medical. You need to click on to this button that lands you to this page. I'm involved in skating. What do I need to know about anti-doping? Click here to know more. Once you click here, you will be op you will receive the purest ice certification course and the education resources from wada 
you can click on to the Pure SI certification course, get yourself Pure SI certified, take a photo and, uh, take, and send us an email regarding your course. There are also water resources if you or your support staff would like to learn more about clean sport. There are e-learning programs for athletes, coaches, doctors, parents, etc. So do spread the word and do let them know. So once you complete the course, you can send us your certificates to antidoping at isu.ch. Uh, also for the ones who are not joining us from the DoorDeck bubble, uh, we, you can also complete the course and send us your certificates. There will be a lucky draw for the first five submissions. We shall be having more webinars in the coming weeks. So do check out the ISU website and ISU social media for more updates on this. The presentation would also be available shortly on the ISU website and YouTube. Thank you for hearing us out. It would have been better if we had the opportunity to interact with you face to face, but we are still hoping for better times. It would be great if you could do the Pure SI course, send us your certificate, and we will, you will be provided with some amazing Pure SI goodies. If you've already done it, you can send your name and surname and we shall check on the system and send you your goodies to your room. Thank you for your time and we wish you all the very best for the competition. Remember, skate clean as pure as ice. We are open for questions now. Do we have a question? Ashley? Yes. yes. Okay, what is... Um... Yeah, so the question is, uh, could you explain the goal of splitting the samples by the lab? Christine, would you like to take that? Yes, I will. So let's imagine your, your samples is stored for a couple of years, and then there is a new method to detect uh, substances in a better way. So we will take the samples from the lab and then the B samples, which have never been open, will be split in two. You will be here or your representative or an external expert. The B sample will be split in B1 and B2. The B1 will be used to do the first analysis, the screening and the confirmation. If the confirmation, if both analyses are positive, then you will receive an adverse, an adverse analytical finding report. And we will, you will be asked if you want to have the B samples analysis. It means the B2 samples. Then you will be allowed to come to the lab and to see the analysis of the second sample. And if the second sample is positive, then an anti-doping rule violation will be assessed against you or the skater, the positive skater. So this is really important because it will save the integrity of the samples. Thank you, Christine. Uh, we have another uh, interesting questions. How can, how do athletes take part in the governance? Christine, would you like to answer that as well? Yeah. So athletes uh, at the, in the ISU, we have the ISU Athletes Commission. So one athlete per discipline, short track, speed skating, figure skating, and uh, synchronized skating has been elected by its pair and is representing you all. The, these athletes um, uh, having, have meeting together. They are part of discussion on the evolution of the sport. And we, as anti-doping department, are also uh, talking with them to know what, what the need will be and so on. So, um, so athletes is... Um, from short track is represented and you can have a look at who is 
um, who is uh, your representative on the ISU website. And a question of, um, I have here a question about substance of abuse. So the question is, can I get a tutor for a substance of abuse? Ashley, please. Thank you, and I think uh, we've always, uh, in our previous webinars, we have this question asked uh, very frequently. So can I get a TUE for a substance of abuse? Uh, TUE, as mentioned earlier, is therapeutic use exemption. So uh, to answer your question, yes, it may be possible for athletes to obtain a TUE for the use of, uh, let's say, cannabinoids. If the athlete is able to satisfy strict criteria under the international standard for therapeutic use exemptions. So the most well-studied medical use of cannabinoids is for the management of chronic pain conditions, predominantly neuropathic pain. So some cannabinoid preparations do contain THC, which is designated as substance of abuse. So to conclude, to finally summarize this, yes, it is possible to get a TUE, but you have to meet all the standards and the strict criteria under the international standard for therapeutic use exemptions. Maybe a last question. Um, we've been asked what happens if I forgot to update my whereabouts due to sudden change in schedule. Ashley? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is a question regarding whereabouts, although we did not discuss whereabouts, but uh, yeah, we would be happy to answer this. Uh, whereabouts can be changed. Uh, there is uh, a new mode to, uh, to record your whereabouts. It's the Athlete Central app. I think we, you can download it from the App Store or from the Google Play Store. And uh, once you download this app, you can register into it. And uh, they have features to add your entries with respect to time slots your regular activity, your competition schedule, your overnight accommodation schedule, your travel schedule, and other. Uh, it's pretty simple and easy to navigate for athletes, especially whose schedule changes due to unforeseen circumstances. Uh, if not, you also can use the SMS service. So we would urge you to look into uh, the WADA's uh, platform for uh, whereabouts. Yeah, maybe I can just precise that the whereabouts are uh, for athletes who are um, included in the registered testing pool or the testing pool. So if you are one of these athletes, you will receive the letter. If you don't receive a letter from either the ISU or the NADO, then whereabouts requirement are not really relevant for you. Okay, okay. I think yeah. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much for uh, following this webinar. Uh, please remember that you can find many information on the ISU website. So do not hesitate to, um, to visit the clean sports pages, anti-doping and medical, and the pure as pages. And if you have any questions, please write us. We are here to help anti-doping at isu.ch. I let Ashley the last words. Thank you, Christine, uh, for clarifying. And uh, yes, uh, thank you for being part of this webinar. Thank you for giving us your time. And uh, do let us know if you have any queries, any other questions that you would like us to take offline, and we would be there to support you. Uh, for the skaters at uh, Dot Drag Bubble, uh, all the best, very all the very best. Uh, remember, skate clean as pure as ice. Thank you for your time.